Okay. If I wanted to prevent, say I will uh, say I'm saying use stack, but um, if I want to prevent the stack, this this is the reference to the original stack, right? Which is created here in main. So we say in stack, and we say use stack, pass the stack uh, object to the function. The function is taking reference. So um, this reference does not restrict use stack from modifying st. If I wanted to restrict st from modifying uh, from modifying the uh, uh, the original object, I can say const, and I can make this reference. Uh, to a constant stack, right? So once again, if we say what stack parameter is, you can see that st is a reference to a constant stack. So I give a promise here that I will not attempt to modify an st in this function. So then if you look at our copy constructor, right? Over here it says, I will make you a copy of another stack. And again, I think we should give a promise that we will not make any attempts to modify that another stack. We're only going to use it as a prototype to make a copy of this object. So again, this should become a constant reference. Uh, then, uh, with assignment, the same thing. We're assigning a left-hand side to the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, right-hand side to the left-hand side. And we should probably say that, that we're not going to modify this other uh, this uh, this uh, another uh, stack. Uh, so this uh, type of modification is not really that difficult. All I need to do is to say uh, uh, this now becomes a const in the assignment because we did that in our uh, in our class declaration, and this also becomes a const in that class declaration. So, except that I can no longer call size because the rule says if you have a reference to a constant uh, to a constant object, you have to promise that uh, that size will also be safe enough not to modify it. So this uh, makes uh, us a second round of review of this class declaration, and we say, uh, okay, let's take a look. Uh, push modifies the stack, pop modifies the content of the stack, top doesn't, this version of top doesn't. When it doesn't, we add const at the end here. And size, of course, also doesn't modify, it only provides the information, so we can declare it const, and functions that are declared const member functions will now become safe to call from other functions that are using constant reference. And uh, so then in our implementation, unfortunately, we have to uh, go find these functions and say top uh, is a const, right? It's a constant function. And size is also a constant function because they no make no attempt to modify anything, just provide some information to the caller. And so this time, our, ver our versions of the uh, uh, of the copy constructor over here is now can safely call size because uh, it's the size explicitly says that I am a constant function. I will not making make any attempts to modify the object on which I am called, and so that's just the final touch. I think uh, I need to make sure that I can build this, and everything is still is still runnable and operational, and it is so. Right. So this is a quick touch. Again, I just want you to know that that type of consideration is very important. And uh, the rule of thumb is that if there's anything that you can make const in your program, you have to do this, right? For instance, if default size, uh, which is one, which is really small, but it's out there, right? If, if this variable should really be a constant value, unmodifiable, just like once declared and initialized, should never change again, you have to make it constant, right? Likewise, 
if you think that the copy constructor should not modify the prototype object which is passed to it as a, as a prototype, you declare a reference to it to prevent copying of it um, as a result of passing the parameter. But by reference, but by constant reference. And finally, all functions that you can review and, and re recognize in your object interface that they're not really intend to modify anything inside your object. They should be declared constant functions. And that's done with that type of syntax. And that uh, perhaps, uh, you know, concludes uh, our uh, final, final, final version of the uh, copy constructor and so forth. There's another interesting aspect. Since we're talking today about uh, uh, constructors, and you have seen a lot of uses for references today, just another very quick consideration. Imagine that, uh, let me see, uh, imagine that I want to create a function that says um, int stack, int stack, okay, um, and um, uh, this function uh, is, uh, will be something like create uh, stack. So I would like to have a function which creates a stack, okay? And if so, if I have this function that creates a stack, um, I can do something like this, return uh, int uh, stack, and there is a syntax for default constructor. Okay, so this is the syntax that you can say, I just want to construct an object of type in stack, use default constructor, okay, and return it. If you think about it, what's happening here is this, uh, that uh, if I, in fact, let's start with main, right? So if I, if I wanted to say in stack equals create stack, okay? So I want to do something special and I would like to make creation of objects in a separate function, which will be responsible for it. There is a little bit of a concern about uh, this, uh, this situation. And this, uh, it's, it's like this. We say this is main, right? So main gets invoked first. So main begins to execute. Uh, main wants to, con so main gets uh, memory, right? And main, main wants to construct a stack. But the line there says, uh, let's uh, make a call to create stack to construct the stack. So, so create uh, stack uh, is invoked. It has no parameters, right? So this, it has its own local scope. It constructs an object just like this, right? So it, it construct an o constructs an object calling the copy constructor and immediately returns it. But look what happens. I return this in stack by copy, right? So the value that I'm returning from this function is returned by copy. So actually a copy constructor has to be invoked in order, right? A copy constructor has to be invoked in order to manufacture this, uh, uh, this stack. So this is not a big deal, but remember that both objects have potentially very large memory block that they may be uh, handling. For instance, I can create, uh, when I say create stack and call this function, I could have populated this stack. I could have pushed like thousands of integers, and this could be managing a very large amount of data as a result. So I really, again, don't want to make a, a copy uh, here, but wouldn't it be nice if I just simply uh, took this object somehow, right? And simply, without the need to uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, deal with this part, simply, simply move it from this function to this function. Right? So it's basically just, uh, I, I don't think it really worked in this animation very well. But you get the idea. So the idea is, could I somehow take this object and move it out from this scope, essentially relocate it, right? Essentially somehow magically take this out of here 
And before this function returns, basically relocate this box over here to, to the place where it should belong without the need to make a copy. So this way, you know, this whole thing gets constructed once. This, uh, let me just uh, uh, clean up uh, one more time, right? So we have two functions. They have these local scopes. Really, don't waste any time to construct anything here. Just construct an object over here, right? And whatever else it does. And basically, magically move this over here so that the box, which eventually gets created, essentially is a result of us moving this from here to a different scope. Wouldn't it be nice, right? So something like that. And so this is a separate topic, and uh, we're going to probably cover it next week. It's called a move constructor. So there's yet another special type of constructor which allows you to relocate from, 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 from this scope to this scope without the need to, making, uh, to make additional copies and uh, without the need to waste your time to invoke copy constructor because uh, what happens, what this function says is that just basically it returns a new version of instec by copy. This we will cover next week. Today I simply won't have, won't have enough time to do that. But that's just something I wanted to show you in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, 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 in terms of uh, uh, those concerns related to a construction of a special type of classes which are themselves uh, resource managers, right? So uh, in, its, in its own self, each box, right, each, each stack that we create, ST, ST2, ST3, all other objects that we create, they're very small. They just contain a handful of integers. However, the, the, the memory resource that they manage is potentially very large, right? Oh, it just disappeared someplace. Uh, oh, it's, yeah. Right, so so this this memory resource that it's pointing to, this memory resource can be pretty large, right? Where where it's beyond of our control how big this is going to be because it's up to the user how many elements they they're going to store in that stack. So we're still going to discuss that, but today again this is our our introduction of the needs for uh, deep copy in both situation assignment and. Uh, uh, construction of new objects by making copies. So I will post this code. You will have access to the code. I will go here and there, and I will maybe add some extra comments. But uh, this is what I'm going to post. So till next week, watch out. If new, new quizzes are posted, make sure that you take them. Don't forget about them. If we post new quizzes, most likely, uh, you know, this Friday I am going to uh, to uh, uh, post another quiz which will be covering uh, some of the material from this week and uh, other than that I'll see you guys uh, next week or I will see you, some of you I will see you tomorrow. Alright, thank you very much. That's it for today.